Hello and welcome. A while back, Unity introduced a new feature called DOTS. Well, DOTS stands for Data Oriented Technology Stack, and it's basically a combination of technologies and packages that deliver a data oriented design approach to building games in Unity. Applying data oriented design to games architecture empowers game creators to scale processing in a highly performant manner. So basically what it is saying is they created a new technology which is faster. So DOTS is made of three things. The first one is ECS, which stands for Entity Component System. In this video, we're gonna cover this. There is also Burst Compiler, which by the way, using this is very easy. You're just gonna put a tag on your methods and it's just gonna do its thing. And the next thing is C Sharp Job System. So Unity team has been developing the dots for a while now and it's keep changing. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about the basics of entity component systems. Now to start, let's open a Unity project. I'm going to use 2023 and I'm going to use 3D URP and I'm going to name the project ECS demo. I'm going to put it on my desktop. Let's create the project. Now that I have a new project, let's remove the readme assets and maybe move this to the settings. Now I am in the sample scene. So to start working with ECS, first we need to install the packages. So in the package manager and in the Unity registry, let's find entities package. Here it is. I'm just going to install that. And also I'm going to install entities graphics. Okay, now we have both packages installed. So normally we refer to the elements in our scene as objects. So this is a game object. This is a game object, this one as well. And this cube here is a game object too. And when we want to control this cube somehow, we could just create a script for it. Let's actually create a folder called script. And here I'm going to create a new script, cube controller. And when we open this script, you see that we are inheriting from mono behavior and we could just create variables as data, like a variable, let's say called speed. And we can run different process inside this mono behavior. For example, let's rotate the transform every frame based on that speed. So as you can see, the data and the process that we run using that data are all inside the mono behavior. So now if I go to the cube and let's name this cube object and attach this mono behavior and play this game, you see that my object starts rotating. Now, if we want to do the same process using entity component system, it's going to be a little more complicated, but it's going to be faster regarding performance. Now, in order to start working with entity component system, we need to create a sub scene. So in order to do that, we're going to go to new sub scene and we're going to create an empty scene and we're going to choose a name for it. I'm going to name it just sub scene and let's save. Now, as you can see, it's going to create a sub scene within our sample scene. And if we go to the scenes here, you see a folder has been created and that is our sub scene. Now, anything we create inside this sub scene will automatically is going to be converted to entity. So you might ask, what is an entity? So as I mentioned before, we used to call these game objects. So in ECS world, we're just going to call these entities. So for example, if I create a cube here inside this sub scene, this cube is going to be an entity. So let's name it cube entity. Now let me save this. So here you see a circle which you can use to switch the inspector. So if we select runtime, this is how the entity looks like. Now if I click on the object, you see that it, it still has its component, but if I click on the entity, it looks different. So this is going to be an entity and this is just a regular game object. Now, in order to start rotating this cube, first, let me disable this. Now we have this cube, which is an entity. Now let's align the camera with our view. Now we have that cube and let's go to the scripts. First, we're going to create a script. And I'm just going to name it cube data. So let's open this. Now, if we take a look at the cube controller, we saw that inside mono behavior, 
we created the data and we also created the process that we run on that data. But in the ECS, we're going to create the data separately and the process that we run on the data separately. So in order to do that, I'm going to remove this. We need to say using unity.entities. So we are no longer going to use unity engine. We're going to use unity entities. If I remove unity engine, you see that we are going to get an error because mono behavior is within unity engine. So instead we're going to say public struct. So we're going to change the class to struct. It's going to be cube data and we're going to inherit from I component data. So we can just go ahead and copy the speed right over here and it does not get a default value. So remove the default value. So let's save this and go back to the editor. So you expect to attach this data to our entity, but actually you can't do that. Let's actually go ahead and try that here. I'm going to put it on automatic, which is authoring. So now if I try to attach this cube data to my cube entity, it says you cannot add this script because it needs to drive from mono behavior. So basically this cube entity is not an entity yet. It's going to be converted to entity when you play the game. So right now it's just a game object and you can only attach mono behavior to game objects. So in order to fix that, we can create another script, which is mono behavior. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to name it cube authoring. Now let's open this and let's clear that. So cube authoring is actually going to drive from mono behavior and we're going to add our speed variable here. So basically we're going to attach this. This is a mono behavior to our game object. And when the game object converts to an entity, we're going to use this speed and we're going to attach this I component data to the entity. And we're going to put the value of this speed inside this speed. It's a little bit complicated. I know, but this is how it is now. To actually do that here, we can create a baker. So let's say public class and we choose a name for it. Let's name it cube baker. And then we're going to drive from the baker. Our baker is going to be for cube authoring. So we're going to use cube authoring. We're going to open curly brackets. So we're going to do our baking here. So if you take a look, we're going to get an error, which is going to say you need to implement the abstract class, which is public override void bake. Okay. So let's do that. So basically this function is going to get called whenever we are going to convert our game object to entity. And here we're going to assign the value of this speed, which is the mono behavior inside our inspector to the entity. So first let's get the entity. We're going to say war entity and it's going to equal to get entity. And we need to pass a flag, which just pass dynamic. And we're going to use add component because we want to add the I component data to the entity. So let's add component to the entity. We're going to pass the entity first. After that, we are going to pass a new cube data, which I'm going to open and close the curly brackets. So let's bring this here. Actually, now we're going to say a speed equals to authoring dot speed. So now if we go back to the editor, we can select our entity and we can attach cube authoring. And now if we go and take a look at the runtime, let me disable and select that again. You see now we have cube data attached to our entity. While if we go back to the authoring and disable the cube authoring, and let's go back to runtime, you see that we don't have cube data attached to our entity. So that's the first step. We are going to attach the data to the entity. Now it's time for us to actually rotate the cube based on that speed. So in order to do that, we're going to use system. The name is entity component system. So this was the entity. This was the component. And now we need to create the system. So let's create a new script. I'm going to name it cube system. And you don't need to attach this system to anything. 
if you write the code for it, it's just going to work. You just open the script. We're going to be using Unity entities and let's remove that. So when it comes to the system, there are two ways you could do this. If you just want to run your code on the main thread, you can just use system base. But if you want to use multi thread and if you want to use the job system, then you need to use I system. So I'm going to do them both. First, let's do the system base. Now we're going to change this to public partial class and we're going to change it to system base. Now you see that we have an error which says it's missing a class. So the class is going to be on update. Let's actually implement that. So we're going to say override on update. This is similar to the mono behavior update that we typically use. So if we take a look at the cube controller, you see that we are using transform.rotate to rotate our transform. So we need delta time and speed. So let's go back to the system. First, I'm going to get the delta time. You can access the delta time in system API, the time, the delta time. Basically, you do everything using this system API. In order to rotate the cube, first we need to access the cube data and then we need to access the transform data. So we're going to do that by saying for each. So basically we're going to run a query and we're going to get those components. So if you want to just get one component, you could do it just like var cube data in the query that we are running. But since we need the cube data and the transform, we're going to say var cube data and transform. By the way, this is not the transform we have here. That's just the name I chose for it. You can choose any name inside. And now we're going to use system API dot query. And we need to determine the type of the query. So the first one is cube data. And the second one is local transform, which is inside Unity transforms. In order to move the position, or rotation, or a scale, you need to access the local transform of that entity. It's not like mono behavior anymore when you can just call transform and you have access to it. Actually, in this system, you need to run a query and get the local transform of that entity and it starts making changes on it. So in every update, it is going to find any entity with cube data and local transform and bring it here for you. Now, we, before we start writing the transform logic, there is one more thing you need to know. So whenever you query the components, you need to determine whether you want to only read the data or you want to change data as well. So right now in the cube data, we only need to read the speed. That's all we need. We don't make any changes on the cube data. We just read from it. But the local transform, we actually want to change it. So we want to write data on the local transform. So in order to do that, so for the cube data, we're going to say ref RO, which stands for read only. And then we're going to open this and close this. So it's going to be ref RO, which is stands for read only. And for this one, we're going to say ref or w and let's open and close that and this w is for right which means we're going to change this local transform we're going to get any entity with cube data and local transform we're going to put the cube data inside this variable and we're going to put the local transform inside this variable now let's rotate this transform by saying transform dot value or w because we want to write to this transform we're going to change the rotation equals to we're going to say transform dot value so we're going to write inside this transform before the equal sign but anything after that we're just going to read from it so you don't need to use rw we can just use ro and we're going to call let's say rotate y because as you can see here we are rotating the game object around vector tree up in the mono behavior here we're going to use rotate y instead and this rotate y is going to get an angle we are going to use the cube data speed so we're going to say cube data dot value read only dot speed and we're going to multiply it by delta time and that should do it let me save this and let's go to the unity editor and now if i play this you see that object is start rotating 
But as you might notice, it's rotating too fast. So let me stop this. And if we go back to the code, this angle actually is in radians, not degrees. So in order to fix that, we can just say math dot, which math exists inside Unity Mathematics. So we're going to say math dot radians, and we're going to put this inside parentheses. Now, if I go to my Unity and play it, it should rotate in normal speed. Now, there is something uh, strange that I want to address here. If we go back to the scene, you see that the cube is not rotating, but it's only rotating in front of the camera, which is kind of strange. I don't know if this is a bug or it's supposed to be like this. I don't know. I'll definitely do some research on this. Now, let's stop this. So this was system base. Now, let's go and do it using iSystem. So I'm going to put all of this inside a comment. And for the I system, we need to say public partial struct. And I'm going to name it cube system. And it's going to inherit from I system. Now inside I system, we can say public void an update. And it's going to get a system state. So I'm going to create a job by saying public partial struct. And let's choose a name for it. I'm going to name it cube job and it's going to inherit from iJob entity. Now, when you create a job, you need to create a function inside it called execute. So this is how you create a job. Now, in order to run this job, you can do it inside the cube system on update. We can just say var job equals to new cube job. And once we created the job, we're going to say job, you have the option to use run. By the way, using run doesn't make any sense because it's going to be just like the system base. So it would be better to just say schedule or schedule parallel. So I'm going to use schedule parallel. Now we have the job and we are running the job. So now let's start writing the logic. First of all, we need the delta time. You cannot get the delta time inside the job, so you need to assign it to the job. In order to do that, we're just going to create a variable called delta time inside the cube job. By the way, this is the cube job. So when you create the delta time inside the job, now here, when you create the job, you can assign the value of the delta time by saying delta time equals to system API dot time dot delta time. So when you create the job, we're going to assign the value of that. And here inside the execute, we're going to write our logic. But now if you remember in the system base, we used query to access the cube data and local transform. But inside a system job, you don't need to do that. You don't need to use query. All you need to do is put the components you want inside this execute parentheses as parameters and it's automatically is going to pass it to you. So we're going to say ref and you're going to use ref to do that. Cube data and let's name it cube data and ref local transform. Let's just name it transform. So you don't need to run anything. It's just going to pass it to this execute for you. So all we need to do is use this line of code. So I'm just going to bring it right here. So let's just use transform, rotate Y, and that's it. Now, if I save this, and if we go to the Unity editor and play, you see that it is giving us the expected behavior. So that's it. That's how you use entity component system. I understand that it is complicated and a little bit confusing. The Unity team is keep improving this. And there's a lot of things that I didn't cover in this video. I was trying to just tell you the basics. If you had any questions, feel free to ask me and don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.